nostalgia. Nostalgia. Miriam Webster defines nostalgia as a wistful or excessively sentimental yearning for return to or of some past period or irrecoverable condition. For me, this restoration was nostalgic. You see, I've always loved bikes. I remember getting my first bike as a kid. I learned how to ride on my older brothers. And then for my fifth birthday, I got this beautiful bike that had a banana seat and just fit me perfect. The first bike I ever restored was one I bought when I was in fourth grade with money I earned for my paper route. It was a 10 speed. I don't remember what the original color was and I don't remember why I chose the color I did, but I painted it orange among other things that I did to it. I thought it would help me with my paper route. And I loved the feeling the 10-speed gave me of freedom as I rode down the bike paths near my home. In high school, I bought my first mountain bike. It was a giant Yukon XE. Shocks were just brand new then, as were indexed shifters. It was 1994. Jump forward a few more years and I find myself in college working at a bike shop. And I bought a Kona Caldera with steel tubing and a Marzocchi shock. I loved that bike. It was really, really awesome. I loved the feeling the steel gave me and the awesome oil bath of that Marzocchi. So, now that I'm in my 40s, I'm starting to feel a little nostalgic about some of those bikes I've had in the past. I've actually restored several bikes and find myself doing it pretty regularly. But I've been wanting an old steel Kona mountain bike for a number of years now. It is that longing for something lost, irrecoverable, that I've been feeling. And I felt it was finally about time to make it happen. Now, as you can see in this restoration, I didn't just restore the bike. In fact, it's not quite a restoration. The frame was in okay condition, but I wanted to update it. I wanted to have that nostalgic feel that I had in college of riding a beautiful Kona steel mountain bike. But I also wanted some of the newer things that you find on bikes nowadays. Things like disc brakes. So I needed to do what you've just seen done. I needed to do some welding. I needed to do some adjusting of the frame. I removed the 
cantilever brake mounts on the bike. Gave it this new paint job. Put on new stickers. I actually really like the blue. But that shouldn't be a big surprise if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while. I really liked also using this spray dot bike paint. It's not the least expensive spray paint you can get, but it's kind of a neat little system. I recommend checking it out. Now that the frame was done, it was time to start the build. And this is something for me, when I'm assembling bikes and putting them together, it's almost as good as actually riding one. I love seeing it come together and I love the feeling of, of just building something. Now the parts that I put on this, the majority of them are ones that I found used also. I wanted this to be giving old things new life taking things that are, that are used, although these, these parts that I'm putting on the bike aren't quite as old as this 94 Kona explosive frame is. But they're not brand new. They're updated, giving this bike a single speed front chain ring. Oval shaped also, which I guess is good for you. Reminds me of the Biopace chain rings that we had in the 90s. A dropper seat post because that's what you do now. It was actually kind of hard to find one that was the right size for this frame. They don't make frame tubing this small very often anymore. A few of the parts were new, like this Ricky headset. I'm not too keen on using used headsets, taking them off a bike and sticking them on another one. Not always the best idea. And hopefully you hardcore bike guys aren't bothered by this, but setting in the headset at home when you don't have a tool, a rubber mallet can do the job on a stump with a with a towel. The fork I found for it also was great. It's a RockShock Reba RL, I believe from 2011, with 100 millimeters of travel and a steer tube that was longer than I needed, which is good because I can set it for the height I want. Again, this is the way I do it at home to make sure that cuts straight using an old stem from another bike and a hacksaw. Now it's time for those much wider handlebars than we rode in the 90s. But things have gotten better.
What's kind of fun is that I was able to reuse the, the cable routing for the bottom, uh, for the front derailleur, for this dropper post cable. Since we're not running a, a front derailleur, came in handy. Took just a little bit of rigging. Another thing that's nostalgic for me, and I actually tend to put on all my bikes, are Uri grips. Something I was put onto when I was in college working at a bike shop. Most of the guys there ran Uri grips. This is an updated version of those grips with um, locks on it so that you can lock it into the handlebar. But I love the plush feel of those grips. This wheel set was another great find. They're used, but nice light. And my son actually asked me if I chose the color of the bike based on the wheels. And I had chosen the blue before I found these wheels, actually. I had ordered the paint and everything. And and then was still trying to find a good set of, of tubeless wheels that were light and, and cool. And came across these for a great price. It was hard to resist some, some Crank Bros Cobalt wheels. Running 180 millimeter discs front and back on the bike making sure everything's torqued down just right and now setting it up for tubeless the rear here, when, when I was setting up the disc brakes, one, I was quite happy with how, how the weld ended up. The fit ended up perfect just using the wheel actually as a, a jig. Turned out great. And that 180 millimeter disc in the back just barely fit inside the frame. Same with the tires I put on this running 2.3 inch tires which would barely fit in the frame. In fact, running it tubeless with uh, the tubes inflated to 40 PSI, they actually rubbed on the inside of the frame a little bit. But I don't plan on riding them at 40 PSI. I plan on running them more around 20 to 30 PSI and uh, that, they just barely don't rub. These old frames, they weren't made for those big, big fat tires that we ride now.
nostalgia. I now have that steel Kona mountain bike that I can ride in the hills near my house. I gave it a new life. So, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Look for opportunities to give those old things new life. And I will see you on the next video. Ciao.